Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and Cody stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all of my information. Uh, please like and subscribe this video as it helps me grow my channel. Doing the hacker rank, doing the leak code, got the playlist, uh, algorithm explanations and stuff. Got hundreds. This is task scheduler. Uh, 621. This is given a char array, character array, an array of characters. Representing tasks a CPU needs to do it contains capital letters a to z where different letters represent different cat tasks okay so we have capital letters in an array and each capital letter represents a different task so a is a different task than z uh, a is a different task than b etc uh, but all a's are the same task okay task could be done without original order so there's no ordering the tasks have to be in okay uh, each task could be done in one interval for each interval, CPU could finish one task or just be idle. Okay, so for each interval, the CPU could do work on a task or it can be idle. Okay, so it's either going to do something or do nothing. However, there is a non-negative cooling interval N that means between two of the same tasks, there must be at least N intervals that the CPU are doing different tasks or nothing. Uh, you need to return the least number of intervals the CPU will take to finish all of the given tasks. Okay, great. So basically, there's all these tasks, right? Let's just look at this. Uh, like A, 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 B, B, B. Uh, so A is a different task than B, right? These don't have to be done in any particular order. Now, how fast can we finish this task? Once we do an A, there is this cooldown period of two where the CPU cannot do an A again, right? So A is a task. It does one A, right? Now it has to do something else for at least two intervals, right? So it can do B and then it can sit idle. Because once you do B, you have to also wait two to go back to B, okay? So you do A, you wait, you, no, 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 you do A, then you do a B, then you remain idle. Then you do an A, then you do a B, then you remain idle, then you do an A, then you do a B and you're done. So that's eight. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Okay, great. How do we do this? So... Basically, what I was thinking off intuition is like, okay, well, it's good to know. It's just good to know how many of each task we have to do and its characters. So we're going to make a little char map showing like the frequency of each task. Each task is a character. So it's, you know, just a basic interray. Uh, I do this like uh, you can do call it task frequencies. You could call it char map. Uh, I like to call it char counts usually, but I'll just call it char map. In this case, it's a new int. It's size 26 for the length of the alphabet. And at each index, uh, like index 0 will be the number of t A's we have to do. Index 1 will be the number of B's. Because index 0 is A is index 0 in the alphabet. You know, the first letter in the alphabet, right? So we're just going to loop through for uh, char C in tasks. Tasks is just a char array already, so we don't have to do two char array. Uh, then we just do char map of c minus capital a because these are capital letters this will get us to the index in the array of the current character so we're looping through we see a so we do char map of a minus a that gives us zero and then we increment the frequency because we saw an a we see an a again a minus a plus plus so now it's two in index zero then it's three in index zero then when you go to b that gives us index one plus plus now it's index one two you know what i mean so we know how this works very uh, you know typical thing now what we're going to do is we're going to sort we're going to sort the tasks. Uh, we're, well, we're going to sort the char map. So the char map is actually going to look like, you know, like this is the example, three, three, and then a bunch of zeros because it's just A, B are the task, and then everything else is zeros. So we're going to sort so that we have the most, the most frequent task is at the very end of the array. So we can get the max value, right? We can get max, max value, the most frequent task is going to be equal to uh, char map, of 25 which is the last letter of the elf like it was size 26 so when we sort it it these don't have to be done in any certain order so we're not accessing the index for z and getting the frequency of z anymore because we sorted it with these this is sorted by frequency of tasks so you might want to imagine it like that at this point it went from you know a char map to frequency of tasks now the most frequent task is the last index last index is 25 now what we want to do is we want to calculate the number of spaces. This is explained in the solution. 
Uh, although I wouldn't recommend the solution exp explanation. It's paragraphs and paragraphs, and it really doesn't make sense to me. But basically, we want to imagine how many idle spots uh, there are, how many idle spots there are for, you know, a current ca character, right? And that's going to be based on the cooldown period. So we'll just imagine every spot that we have to waste after doing the max val task as an idle period, right? So we'll say, you know, idle slots, idle slots will be equal to max val times n. Because like, for example, if, um, well, first of all, when we get the max value, what we're going to do is we're going to access that most frequent, the frequency of that max value. And we're going to subtract one because we don't need to actually wait. We don't need to wait on the very last uh, occurrence, right? We do A, B, idle, A, B, idle. But on the last one, we don't need to wait anymore. It doesn't matter. So we're going to do minus one for that reason. Okay. Now, idle slots is equal to max val times n because for each character, when we do have to wait, we have these slots that we have to fill, right? So we have an n slots, right? So these two, these first two, we have to fill. The last one doesn't count. We don't have to fill those slots because we're not worried about it anymore. We just have to do whatever. But for these two, we have to fill these, like the, two times two is four. We have to fill those, um, you know, those extra slots up with some tasks or idle, you know, things. So we have idle slots and then... What we do is we calculate the idle slots and now we just loop backwards through the rest of the tasks and we want to fill those. We make, we, we think of everything as idle. So we just think of, oh, we'll just fill everything with idle. These intervals that we have to fill up. So for this A, we have to fill two spots to go back to A. Uh, we'll just fill it up with idle. This A, we'll just fill it up with idle, right? That's not optimal though. So now what we want to do is loop backwards and try and fill it up with actual other tasks like B, for example. So B does exist. And what we'll do is we'll just subtract those from the remaining idle slots, right? So we don't have to do idle. So we'll get rid of some of these idle ones by filling it up with tasks. And that'll, that, that will just be math.min of uh, char map going backwards, because going backwards, it's sorted by most frequent task at this point. So going backwards, we're gonna get these most frequent tasks uh, right here. And uh, the minimum between, you know, the most frequent tasks. And if it was equal to the max value uh, or then we're gonna all we're just gonna pick the minimum between that and the max value, because we that one we also um, you know we want that minus one there because we you know we just fill it up evenly and then the last one doesn't matter you know what I'm saying. So that's pretty much it. And then whatever's left over, if you couldn't fill up all those idle slots with these tasks, like whatever tasks you also had besides you know maybe A, if there was no B, it are you know, there is B, but we still have idle slots up to over when we, you know, fill it up. Um, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to say, okay, return idle slots. If it's greater than zero, that means there's still idle slots left. So we have to execute at least those idle slots plus all of the tasks. Um, otherwise, it's just tasks.length. So just to explain this one more time. Uh, what is the length of this? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's two idle slots we could not fill up with other tasks. So those are getting added in addition to all, because we have to complete every task. So no matter what, we're going to have to complete every task. But we want to try and fill up all of those idle slots. If we can't, we're going to have to do idle slots plus tasks out length. Otherwise, we're just going to, you know, we filled up all the idle slots. So we can actually just do, it's just going to be, we just have to execute all the tasks. So that's pretty much it. Uh, you can walk through this code a little bit if you want to. The sorting doesn't uh, ruin the time complexity because you're sorting on an array of size 26. You know, If you don't want to sort and you really want to be strict about it, you could just make a max variable and then find the max value by doing a for loop and finding it. You could do it either way. Um, this doesn't ruin the time complexity though because it's size 26. Now, uh, once again, if we look through... Uh, you could you could look through this yourself. So you fill up the char map, right? The char map is three three zero zero zero. Then we sort it, right? So it goes backwards. Most frequent task at the end. We get the max value. It's three. Then minus one from it is two. Uh, idle slots is two times two, which is four. So we have to fill those up. Um, we do idle slots minus two because idle slots minus equals the other task was three, and we do the minimum be three three. And if it was equal to the max value, we do the max value because we don't we don't care about the last one. We fill up two of those slots. There's two idle slots left. So we return two plus six, which is eight. And that's what we got for this example. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any other questions about this or if you have another approach. This is another equally 
efficient approach called using priority queue. Maybe I could go over this in another video. But uh, yeah, maybe we want to check out this. It just looks a little more jumbled up, and this seems like a more intuitive and cooler solution. So, I mean, like, look at it. It's a lot uh, simpler, it looks like. So maybe check out this uh, priority queue solution as well. I do not like for this problem, like, look at all of this gibberish. That, I, I don't know. I couldn't read it, and it was having, I was having a tough time. Thank you for watching. Uh, that's it, and I'll see you in the next video. All right. See ya. Peace on earth.